This car is how it, how it raced at the Brick, first Brickyard 400. If you're the only person I'll sell it to, why? Because everybody else I wanted to make it a Days of Thunder car. But we need a caution, right? Mm hmm. So there's a button right around. Damn it, don't make me cry on TV. <laughs> Bump it over one more time and clutch out. You're good. Hit the ignition. Go. If it said Burger King on it, or if it said uh, Kmart on it, I wouldn't give a damn about this car but I was born and raised in, in Indiana. My parents went to Speedway High School, and uh, this says the corporate car of Indianapolis on it, so it's like finding the spirit of St. Louis and living in St. Louis. So it's back. It is the only car wearing the same paint, the same chips, the same dent. Sullivan somehow kept all the doors on it, and it's going back home to Indiana. How old were you when you watched that race? So I was in turn one when Mast and, and Earnhardt got together and, and bent Mast tailpipe up. Yeah. And then they came, Mast, uh, so I was in turn one on the very first Brickyard 400 on the inaugural race. And you know, you gotta think there's 400,000 people there. We were right across from each other because I was in pit box one. Okay, so <laughs> as, as they come through, Ironic. They, yeah, they come through and slam. And of course, they're going to take the whole field out on the first lap. I mean, this is the golden era of NASCAR. This is not maybe what we have now. Big E was going to lead that first lap. No matter come what. Come hell or high water. Yep. And so if you watch the footage, he comes out of four and nails the wall and shifts the whole track, everything off. Hit Rick, too. Hit Rick. Hit everybody. Known to man. <laughs> but then uh, you, you might as well hit the pace car, too, right? Yeah. So, uh, so on lap four or three... The passenger side window blew out of this car. Magically. And, Magic. and it just, and it hit the ground in front of us. So all of us, in the, in, you know, everybody, it, we, the spectators see things before the track officials do. So we're all in turn one pointing, pointing, pointing. And then here comes Harry Gant. Boom. Runs it over and throws it into the crowd. Over the fence. And I still have my chunk of the window that I caught that day from this car. And now I own the car. Wow. So, see the magic caution was a lot of people don't. Kathy didn't have a crew or a team, so she got this car from Morgan McClure, mm -hmm. RCR, Richard Childress mm -hmm. Racing. They put it together, had their motor in it. Yep. They crewed the car, so when Dale needed a caution, he hit the magic button there that holds the window in, and and um. and then Sullivan pulls in, and everybody's on the pit wall, and they look at him like, "What well, the hell are you here?" and they couldn't see that the window was missing on this side and of course they have to run down but they didn't have a car they had to run down and get the window out of another and this that, and another and racing down there and they, uh, they finally got the window in but uh he was five laps down when he came back to uh into the field and at the back of the field but he finished out of 43 cars starting 26 lost five laps he was only four down at the end of the race and finished 33rd and kept all the doors on it have you looked at the window frame to see if there's any forensic evidence there's of the one blowing out? Rivet holes, holes they when they because the they, they couldn't put they didn't, didn't have fit. the they didn't have the right so they had the, there holes in it. There was rivet holes through the and they may be on the inside, but yeah, this here, we'll show you how the magic caution. magic yeah how the so we need a caution right? Mm -hmm. So there's a button right or a, basically a seat belt. So guess what flies out? And then, oh, he's got a zip tie. Oh, there it is. And then lands in the speedway. And so there's, uh, oh, there's some ribbon holes there. Magic holes that that aren't supposed to be there because that's how the windows are held in. Huh. So we're just and in the video when you see him come in the pit lane, they're just and the wind, and the NASCAR officials are sitting there with their this arms crossed <laughs> and uh, and it's just taken off and the, and it doesn't fit and they tried to tape it in. Yeah. It was the most ridiculous thing you've ever seen. But then uh, they need a magical caution and guess what happened? Was that seatbelt clip original to the car? Yeah, no, that that's was, how it is that how they were all built actually, or just this one? After not too long after that incident, we they started instituting. Because at the time, like everybody had their own way to hold these windows in. It was every team was a little different. Mm -hmm. Every little bit, and then they came out with those little uh, oh, push the little buttons. push clips or whatever. Yeah. So once they came out with those, and then you know people started putting three or four. So finally, it's still says got to have two of these clips in it. Yeah. This is where they go. This is how it works. And the driver couldn't. The yeah had, had, cable. had no access to get the window out. Basically, the only uh, way you could reach it was be out of your belts and. Mm -hmm. 
And not, just getting, not from just reaching over and going boop. And, so and, was this a common thing back then for people to put a buckle here and pop yeah, that? Yeah. I never noticed that. I mean, I've seen this car in here a bunch of times. Well, and we, that, had to, we had to build a whole new... Everything for yeah. this because the window like was going. <laughs> and uh, did you save the other? Or no, that didn't have a window in it. In the, in the, in the so no. the window was missing at the when he got it, and then he, at the Speedway Hall of or the North Carolina Motorsports Hall of Fame, it was gone too. So now after it left in 1994, the window's back. The window's back in it now. So, what on this car um, did you actually like update to make it work? We rewired the whole thing. We rewired it, and uh, Grandpa rewired the whole car because it was just so, like, brittle. It, and it was old, like, trailer wiring harness that we used to use back in the day, not the nice nickel stuff that we use now. Can, uh, can you decipher the tires at all? Or is that right rear Daytona, blah, 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 or is that just what was on it? Those are my tires off my land speed car. <laughs> They were the nicest I guess, ones. They were the nicest ones I had. <laughs> so you got 225 mile an hour tires Woo! too. But yeah, so if you watch the, so the anyhow, ball. get back to I, I cut you off there, Aaron. So when he put it back together, he would call or we would text, and he goes, "How far do you want to go? What do you want me to do? What are you going to do with this thing, Travis?" And I go, "You know, I'm going to bring it home, but you know, they have the they have the sports car or the." stock car classic guys that go to Rockingham and stuff. I mean, it'd be fun to take a couple laps, but I don't. So my main goal, can you reach in there? Sorry about that. Did you feel symbolic putting the window back in oh, man. after watching I, it fly out? I just can't. The yellow paint, knowing that it was Morgan McClure, wearing my hometown's name. Um, you know, why would a guy that lives, I live on five acres and have two pole barns and my pole barns look like this. I have one ass and two feet and too many cars. <laughs> so, uh, and, but the CEO of my life, my wife is, uh, she's like, chase your dream. So uh, why on God's green earth do I do, need this? Why don't I need this? And it's- I think mean, it's going so, to a good home, I think. Well, so our goal now is to get Danny Sullivan to drive it one more time around the Brickyard 400, or around the motor speedway. The good race is the Annapolis 500, which there for the years of Tony George, it was, it was bad. So, but they race or they'll take a couple laps in vintage cars before, during opening ceremonies. And if we snuck this thing out there and Sullivan really didn't know it was there, cause he, even though we've, we've talked a lot about it on the internet, whatever else, um, Dave, uh, Doug Bowles, who is the president of the Motor Speedway is the best thing that ever happened to that place. And Penske picking it up doesn't hurt that much either. But uh, he knows about it, so it may leave here, go to my house for a couple, end up at the Motor Speedway Museum for a little while, and then on opening ceremonies for the uh, next Indy 500, it may take a couple laps, and I will be a train wreck if you. I'll be like, oh, the car, I'll be like, <laughs> and then it was a mess, and Aaron took it back, and it's running, and uh, so I will be a complete disaster. So don't film me that day because I cry at NASCAR races anyhow half the time. So, so this was like put together by Childress. Yeah. How come it's a McClure car? Why wasn't one she of their got old the ones? She car from McClure. Yeah. Oh, so she got it and put, brought it to them. put a deal together for Childress to crew it, and put it, you know, put it all together and put their motor, had a Childress motor in it. It was okay. supposed to be a Pontiac too. It was supposed to be a Grand Prix because right. all, when the, when they unveil it with the mayor back then was Mayor Goldsmith and everything, they unveil a Grand Prix and then he's out of so Chevy right. test day and he's out in the Chevy and we're like going, what the hell is going on? But then, of course, on Chevy Test Day, he blows it up, and that's when, and it had, you know, an Aaron Travis budget and yeah, Mitch, Mitch budget, money. and, you yeah. know, this was the pit crew and everything else. But then Danny goes out there and detonates it and blows it up. And so that's when they got the RCR power plant, and they had, they said, hell, if the city is behind it, how can the city of Indianapolis's car not qualify? <laughs> so, but all this, that's local. So the the uh, the race, the first race was was carried by WRTV, which is the ABC affi affiliate in Indianapolis. Um, of course, Allison Transmissions are from Indy. All that's Indianapolis. This was the guy. His name's Dennis. I, I can't think of his last name. Uh, he was the one that put this whole deal together and took Checkers Pizza off the car or Checkers Soda and whatever it was called, and uh, and then put all these people together. And then uh, if you open up that Brickyard 400 program. It's uh, it's it says where 
the car, you can go see the car at Target and whatever else, but that was the Pontiac that they would take around and everybody could get their picture taken. Uh, Damn it, man. I mean, think about my life now. I own the car that I caught the window from, and uh, I have a, a mentor that, that taught me 12 volts and made, made me a car guy. My parents, when it's broke, my parents put tape on it, you know, <laughs> and like if the, if the recliner's broke, like it's got tape all over it kind of thing. But uh, it's, uh, I, it's, it's, uh, damn it, that's a good day to be a, a vintage racing fan. Did yeah. you find anything cool while you guys are all up inside this thing? Like any weird, just neat things? Yeah, actually when I first bought the car, we uh, brought it back, we put it on jack stands, we were cleaning it out. I said, man, I wonder if this thing's got lead in it. When we pulled out 450 pounds of lead. <laughs> Yeah, it on, was, on one side of it. Or it was actually on both sides. Yeah, it was it was all the way on the right front, and then that whole left rail and the inner box was full. So it was a pretty good car at the time. I mean, if you get four hundred pounds of lead in one of these things back then, that was pretty sporty. It wasn't no pile of junk, that's for sure. Is the windshield so foggy? Aaron built a new windshield for it, which was a struggle. Yeah, because they don't make windshields. The aluminum, aluminum tin plate's gone, so that's from scratch. Uh, because it doesn't matter how bad you buffed it, it was not coming back. It was not coming back. This then, back one will, the front one will. Yeah, but that then the jump. only other thing that's different, I mean, of course, you, you made it a driver, and it is that goofy air box, wherever that air box is. That was, that box was not for this, this car. car. Yeah, yeah, because when it's you... It's laying around here somewhere. Yeah, and, uh, but it's weird that, you know, how long and low they are now, too, because, of course, I mean... After this, they became really cattywampus, and you guys at Earnhardt kind of made yeah, your own I mean, noses. When we, when we hung these bodies back in the day, I mean, you might offset the deck lid a half the inch and the nose, maybe three quarter, and the roof might have a little twist in it. Mm -hmm. It definitely didn't go to the six inches on some of yeah. You know, by 2005, we had the tails offset f literally five inches. Yeah. The roof twisted sideways, and you know, nose all bent in one, you know, slant, like that corner would touch the ground. It was all goofy looking. But then, so, of course, it was a painted Morgan McClure car, and then they painted over the top of that. Yes, underneath it's, of that is a yellow Kodak car. It is not a wrap. It is a yellow Kodak number four. Have you done any digging to find out the history of this chassis? That's next. We tried. I think Travis, I think Travis will figure that one out. Okay. I, I talked to Tony Glover a little bit. He didn't know. Yeah. So I, I'm sure there's some guys out there that, that'll know, you know, what chassis MM19 was, and yeah, you know, it must have been a pretty good car. It qualified in for the Brickyard 400. It was faster than three quarters of the rest of the cars that showed up. So, yeah. you know, they, I think there was 90 cars, 99 yeah, cars. Yeah, that some first shit. race, everybody wanted to be in it, and we so paid a hundred thousand dollars just to start the damn thing. Well, and then so here was the thing that you and I talked about. So they had four Indy 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 500 drivers. They had AJ Foyt. Jeff Brabin, uh, they had John Andretti and Danny Sullivan. So that was four people out of all the Winston regulars and everybody else that tried to put a car in the field. But then af after this car finished at the awards banquet, the purse was only like $32,000 for, for that. But then a guy that you know said, I wrote a check to Danny Sullivan for four hundred thousand dollars just to drive the <laughs> just car to drive the car and i was like going danny sullivan made you know 16 or 20 times more than the car actually brought home in a purse but he kept all the damn doors on it like yeah, it's still there so he didn't do too bad and you know nobody was shoving cameras in his face when it was over it's uh he quietly went away and it quietly went to a garage so and now it's back <laughs> go go here <laughs> no it's cool i'm glad it's going to a good home it's yeah I bought it. I wasn't necessarily a fan of Danny or any of that, but I knew it needed to get saved. Mm -hmm. That's what, you know, and that's why I thought put, buying it and putting it in Don's museum was a good place for it. That's why I forgot I had it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm calling him at the spaceport and I go, what? I go 99 car. He goes, what? who is this? What? And I go, Travis Bell, Indianapolis, blah, blah, blah. I said, why are you calling me? I go, you have a black 99 car. He said, I, I'll, yeah, call the, I'll call you. I, we're at spaceport. I'll call you when I get high. And he called me. And he said, when are you coming down? So I walked over to Grandpa, because we were racing that weekend, and, you know, and I walked over to Grandpa. I said, do we have a black 99? He looked at me and said, yeah, it's in Don's Museum. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah that one. Yeah. And who, who wants, I mean, it, unless you're from India, if it's not a Burger King, it doesn't say Good Wrench on it real big, it doesn't say Kodak on it anymore. Who the hell else wants 
other than a kid that grew up in basically Speedway, Indiana, and caught the window and cheered his hometown car on, and now we're taking it back home. It's going to be like you and that Spud McGee in the 43. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Have you have you sat in it yet? I haven't even. I didn't sit at it. Sit in it at the at the speedway or at the museum or no, this is the first time. When it was here, I didn't sit in it. Well, oh, it was it was stuck in COVID land forever. Yeah, and you couldn't get it out of the museum, and you had to move two petty cars and two race trucks just to even get yeah, out. Yeah, that of the was museum. quite the adventure just to wedge it out of there. So they, he sent me photos, and he was like, "Man, I like you, but this has been a long day." <laughs> and, uh, we had half the museum as and half there. your oh, shop, and, and Don and, Miller's like, "Don't scratch this." How did you first bro. hear that <laughs> that the car existed <laughs> still? B that he had it. C how did you get a hold of him to ask him about it? So I'll send you these, but there that is them moving petty car, petty car and putting it on rollers just to get it out of the museum. And it was the worst ever, and that was it. So they had to move all those cars to get it out that door back there. Crazy. And then um, put everything back. And then put everything, <laughs> or scoot everything down. Yeah. And then for me, I saw it floating around the internet. It was sitting next to a, a Continental bathroom tissue, like a, a Thunderbird. Yeah. The, uh, and then it was... About Mark Martin car, I think. Yeah, and then it's... But it was at... Kathy's place yeah. for their sports marketing thing and then of course they got a divorce and it was sitting on Facebook marketplace and Aaron's like oh, it's not on there anymore I bought it <laughs> so but her son contacted you yeah I think so and then you just I just Google searched it and said you were we're happy to have this whatever and it was sitting back in one of these corners and add to the fleet and and uh, hopefully we'll find time to work on this thing did the did the the quality test are you going to turn it into a days of thunders car and if that answer is no then you move on to the next right. question it was a quite an interview process yeah. <laughs> he said now this is going to be the price and that's it and uh, so so once that didn't scare me off and there was like why the hell do you want this and when what are you going to i said aaron i'm going to have you do the work Dang, all right. Well, I'll meet you at the Motorsports <laughs> Museum. That just puts more work for me, so. You gonna get in it? Yeah, oh yeah. Are you gonna get in it? Well, I think you should get in it first. All right. You haven't sat, it's, you haven't, I'm surprised you have not. No. Nope. God, if I were you, first thing I would do is hop in this car yep. and jiggle the steering wheel like a seven-year-old sure. pretending to Why drive it. Why would you? Why would you not do that? Yeah. So how old were you when you watched that race? Let's see, so I'm 48 and that was in 1994. So, uh, I don't know, I went to Indiana and did bad math, <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, I, <laughs> first day, <laughs> gosh man, what a crazy, why do we do this, Mitch? Uh, I don't know, yep. I feel like these kind of things, they just, I mean, you, they leave an imprint. You moved down here for this stuff. I did, yeah. Because. I mean, granted, I live in the most, I mean, the racing capital of the world, but it's nothing compared to this street alone. What's the best way? Feet first? Just uh, dive in head first. Kids I can't do that. <laughs> no, you got to remember, I owned a General Lee. Definitely. Feet I owned first. a General Lee for 18 years. Yeah, and I push that forward and see how. Don't hit. Fall on yeah. Harry's car. Harry's car. So I was able to get in and out of my General Lee quicker than I could with the door, but I got a, a rougher shoulder now. Man, definitely takes steroids. Yeah, yeah. Pop that off. What are you? What are you feeling right now? Oh, it's crazy, man! Damn it! Don't make me cry on TV. <laughs> <laughs> I cried on Vinwicky on YouTube, but nobody knows yet. But uh, it's not bad. No. For my first time. You got it. You got to figure it out. Man, they are so close. Well, that's a bad. It probably goes this way a little bit better. <laughs> Damn. All right, Aaron. So what is it? Clutch in. First or not first? Ignition. Oh, no. Turn that ignition off. Off. Just bump it over and make sure it's not in gear. So then, there you go. Hit that one up. All right, you're not in gear. Go ahead, turn it. Clutch is on. in though. Yeah. So. Bump it over one more time and clutch out. You're good. Hit the ignition. Go.
that feel? Life is good. <laughs> that turn that back off, bro. Look at me. Look at you, you're doing it. Oh. It does smell good. I didn't know that there was. There's, there's, uh, Aaron, there's, uh, like padding by the roll bar. Like that. I didn't know that was in these cars. We got right in the door and all of a sudden she walked out. I didn't know anything about a damn door yeah. pad. We actually got that from next door from Billy. It's a period correct one from yep. ESR. Did it always just say Danny? Or yeah, it, on all of his cars. It never said Sullivan, just no, Danny. All of his cars just, and he's from Louisville. He's just Danny. Yeah. He's the wow. Danny. Aaron, there's a, you can't slide off the foot pedal going to the passenger side either. That's just how he drove it. That is so crazy. But. How adjustable was it? Going back home, does yeah, super crazy. What do you think? You feel like full circle? Yeah, it's bananas, and I'm in the car that I saw at the 1994 Brickyard 400 that uh, is coming back to Indianapolis. So it's good. Life is good. If I can get back out. We'll just push you in the trailer. <laughs> good to go. Oh my God. Junior used to go head first. <laughs> Not too bad, dude. I'm way too tall for head first, but owning a General Lee for 18 years helps. So. so you've done a lot of interesting things with a lot of cars. Where does this and like sitting in there and turning it on a rank? Yeah, this one's up there. I mean, so I own the first General Lee from the Dukes of Hazard. I spent years looking for it. It's like finding the Millennium Falcon and being a Star Wars fan, but I had to keep my mouth shut because it wasn't for sale. This one was for sale but how much do you put into it? And then you trust somebody like Aaron to not, that was our thing, how do you not screw it up? So when I first, first bought the first General Lee, everything else is a replica. And then of course, we jumped to General Lee and then jumped one for MTB and had lots of fun. So I'm in and out of the windows, no problem. But uh, this is pretty big. If we're not using a can, just push it in and give it some gas. Yeah, and when you see it come up here, stop. <laughs> that would help. All right, so it's got a flapper valve in it, so make sure you put a screwdriver down there. Now. All right, so making sure I'm not dumb, tell me what this is again. This, when uh, you used to go to the track, that was the 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 Chevrolet number, and you had to have this. It had to be on there in order to race it. And then we kind of evolved, like at DEI, we chopped up those noses so much on them speedway cars. Yeah, we made a mold and made our own noses. <laughs> Actually, Tim Tim Clements that works here made the mold for all the Speedway cars, and we made our own carbon fiber noses. Do you know where the Morgan McClure number is on the... The tag somewhere, on an aluminum tag riveted somewhere on is here. Is that right there in the front? Yeah, right there it is. Oh, wait. MC19. Morgan McClure 19. So do you know the backstory of how this thing ended up from McClure to, to Indianapolis? Kathy well, and, and Chris Ven right. Venture or Virtue or Venture? Kathy, Kathy Virtue, she's been in the NASCAR business for a long, long, long time. And she had sports marketing and all kinds yep. of stuff with her husband. Yep, and so yeah. they did this deal, you know, inaugural Brickyard 400. Well, 99 then, cars show up, oddly then, enough. <laughs> well, and they had, uh, it was supposed to be the 99 cent Checkers Pizza right. car. And because I have the Checkers uniform, mm -hmm. so everything at Checkers was 99 cents, sodas, malts, hot dogs, or whatever else. And then, of course, this guy came along and said, hey, let's do this and let's put Danny Sullivan in it. And even though he was already the, the injured driver, in, entered driver, but then they went from 99 cents. Well, we didn't have Checkers in Indiana, so it really made no sense, even though we don't have Winn-Dixie. Bojangles, they still race the cars, but he blew it up on uh, Chevrolet practice day in a red fire suit. I sent you the pictures of that, yeah. and and he's pushing it. That's down amazing the, the pictures you've come up with from this. The day. people that have come out of the woodwork uh, ever since our goofy conversation and were like, "Okay, Travis, you're the only person I'll sell it to. Why?" Because everybody else wanted to make it a Days of Thunder car. A damn, a damn Days of Thunder I was car. Like, I had so many phone calls. Well, I want to do this and I want to do that. And I was just like, nope, nope. Yeah. I could have sold this car a hundred times. I know. And I was like, nope, nope, nope. Yeah, so. It, I didn't. And then Tr Travis called me and he's like, 
Denny Sullivan, I was at the racetrack when the wind blew out. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, we might be on to something here. Yeah. Oh, I want to keep the car just like it was, and we're going to put it back together. I don't want to do anything because it's all original decals. Yeah. This car is, the body is how, how it raced at the Brick, first Brickyard 400. I mean, I worked at Rick Mass. We sat on the pole, and they beat us. <laughs> well, and, and you, uh, I'm just saying. You got to you got to think though. Out of the 43 or whatever starters went that day, and all the other cars either got turned into a, a bush car or not, raced again somewhere else. It got into an ARCA team. There's none. none there's were not the one same. car that started that race that day. That is as it started to race like this one. And even the winning car, Gordon, because he had a couple well, they of donuts. It. And they, they repainted it. They wrecked it yeah. and raced it. I think they wrecked it at Pocono. Mm -hmm. We clipped it. And mm -hmm. then, I mean, it's over there all restored now, but it's not. These are, the, this is what it, this is this is it. They made, they made it in. 99 I mean, cars. I mean, I mean, so, they made it. So on second day qualifying, he qualifies 26. I mean, he, come on now. And of course, when you come through Indy, where did he did he finish twenty thirty third thirty third because I think he, we finished twenty he lost he lost five oh, laps because of this because the window blew out. His big E needed to caution because him and Rick got together. Dude, and spot. he slammed the wall and for but of course at Indy so big when you go through one and then two if you slide through two you scrub off all your speed on the back stretch and in qualifications he had this thing sideways. And so when he's coming back through three on his warm-up clap and or lapping, everybody's clapping, and he just thought, oh well, I'm Danny Sullivan, thanks so much. And he comes back around. And he said, partner, you put it 20, 26 in the field, and he couldn't believe it himself. They, well, it's just a cool story that this car is still. You know, and Kathy, it sat in her barn for 30 years. Yeah. How did she end up with it? She owned it. She owned oh. it. So then they put that plaque on it, and they had yeah. it. They had it in her Stoke little. Car. They had it in her little warehouse, and then when her and her husband got a divorce, she ended up with it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, and then uh, they moved it. She just lived in a neighborhood, so it was in her that neighborhood. And uh, along comes Aaron Brown and says, "All right, uh, I, I don't know what we'll do with it, but we, it shouldn't just sit in your garage." We're gonna figure out how to strap this thing down. Yep. So what is the proper? All right. So wind strapping in a trailer. Don't grab these. Oh, there's a hook right there. There's two hooks. Yep, there you go. All right. Mitch, you see that? Yeah. Mitch, that's just handy. make sure those hooks, um, make sure they, uh, everything clears. It may be close. After one of the first videos we did with the garage shop, some of you guys linked me to the VinWiki video with Travis in the corporate car which I watched and I was like, wow, that that's really cool. That guy is like all in. You could tell that that thing just, just lights him up. He actually reached out to me when he was driving out here and said, hey, we're gonna pick up the car. You should come out and film something. I'm like, oh, absolutely, I will be there. If you wanna know the entire story, you can go watch the VinWiki video with Travis. There's far more pictures, far more details. He kinda goes over the synopsis of it. But that is the last car that is in its original condition from that race that's it that's a crazy piece of history i don't know could you could you tell how pumped he was to sit in that thing yeah like i he, think that's cool because i think not a lot of people have that fire for something if that makes sense a lot of people yeah they might like football or they might like a certain car or something but they don't get that excited and fired up this passionate about it like to go search for that specific car and have it restored to its glory. Once we weren't filming, he was um, talking to his wife on the phone or whatever, and the, the verbiage he used I thought was very interesting. He said, I'm a happy kid right now. And to me, I feel that because a while back I discovered the more I explore things that I was interested in when I was a little kid, the happier I am now. It's like those things are just they are the buttons that still poke my interest today. And I could tell that he was feeling that when he was looking at that car and sitting about it, sitting and thinking about it. And just the fact that he used that verbiage kind of confirmed that for me. So I challenge you, think about what you were into when you were five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old, somewhere around there, and go indulge that a little bit, as long as it's legal.
but <laughs> <laughs> I promise you, you will find a type of happiness and interest that you may have not had before. I found it. You can tell Travis found it. I'm sure Aaron found it by preserving the history of all that stuff in there, which by the way, you can check out on the Garage Shop YouTube channel. Uh, this is only the tip of the iceberg, just kind of history stuff is why we moved here. So if you like that too, you should subscribe because you'll be in the right place for it. Yeah, also we are still working on the Monte Carlo update video will be coming about on that soon, making some fan stuff. You can find the things we're wearing at stapletonautoworks.com. Not gonna do a huge plug not here. I'm not what I'm wearing. Not what you're wearing, that's what you wore to the gym this morning. But we got hoodies, t-shirts, all that stuff yeah go go check it out I'm not gonna drag it out this was just cool i'm glad to participate and i want to know leave a comment and let me know what you think the coolest part about this car was with the fact that it's still all original that travis is so pumped about it that he watched it that he had a piece of the window or that it had a button to make the window pop out in the first place there's just save that for that long like a piece of a broken window yeah he still Who the it. hell would think to do that unless they really cared yeah exactly it's like it's just crazy i'm glad you guys are here and i'm i'm glad you made it this far because that tells me you sh you share the same interest in this kind of stuff that we do so welcome to the team